Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Methuen, Massachusetts. Our worship on this second Sunday of Easter is morning prayer right two, which is in the Book of Common Prayer, and we begin this morning on page 77. If you don't have the Book of Common Prayer handy, that's okay. Uh, just uh, listen along. Our opening sentence this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And a second opening sentence this morning with the theme of hope. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. We continue on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, 
my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, second chapter, verse 14a and verses 22 through 32. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and uh, of that, all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle in response is the Gloria.
second reading is from the first letter of Peter, first chapter beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you know have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the people, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with me, you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our worship this morning continues on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our suffrages of Form A found on page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let your needy, O Lord, not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. For our prayers, our collects, I'll begin with the collect appointed for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who with the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, 
we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A call out for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a collect from the prayer book for the President of the United States and all in civil authority. O gracious and loving God, whose glory is in all the world, we commend our nation to your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the President of the United States, the Governor of this state of Massachusetts, to the governors of all the states in the United States, and to all who hold authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all people, all of creation, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
On our prayer list this week, we pray for Chris and Doreen Hutchins, Tony Montecalvo, Howard Dearden, Elaine Morissette, Thomas, Dot Johnson, Jack and family, Ralph Carey, Ellen Weinhold, Gertrude Carey, Blanche Campbell, and Kimberly, and for all those from whom we are separated today. We also pray for all of those who are suffering from affliction of the COVID-19 pandemic. We also hold in our prayers all of the people who are caring for them, their family members, medical personnel, and our first responders. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the Concord River Deanery, St. John's Chapel, Groton School, Groton, St. Michael's Church, Holliston, St. Paul's Church, Hopkinton, St. Luke's Church, Hudson, and we pray for Episcopal Church women. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, the Most Reverend Michael Lewis, Archbishop, Jerusalem and the Middle East, and Bishop of Cyprus and the Gulf, and St. John's Humbi, our partners in clean water in Tanzania. In the local cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Xenia Orthodox Church in Methuen. Our altar today is prepared by the Altar Guild to the glory of God. We remember in our prayers this week, Louis Fabiolo, who died. May Louis' soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Before our general thanksgiving, I'd like to spend a few minutes commenting on today's scripture passage. In our gospel story this morning, we find the disciples in an upstairs locked room, sheltering in place. We're sheltering in place now too for different reasons. They were sheltering in place because they were afraid of the crowds. The reason that Jesus had been arrested, tried, and executed by the leaders of the Roman government and the leaders of the local temple was in part because he was a threat to the order they represented. He was a subversive and he had followers. Their idea was that if they could end the life of the leader of that group, the group might fall apart and no longer be a threat to them. But they weren't taking any chances, so they had people out in the crowds, among the people, hunting for Jesus' disciples. And, the Jesus, and Jesus' disciples had shut themselves in an upstairs room and locked themselves in because of fear. Jesus appeared to them, the story says, a couple of weeks apart. This, of course, is the story about doubting Thomas, the idea of having faith even though one doesn't see and how blessed that is, and perhaps by implication how blessed we are that we believe but haven't actually seen Jesus, or perhaps most of us haven't. But I would prefer to look at this gospel passage today in a different way and not use it to compare ourselves to Thomas in our belief versus his. I'd like to point out that the disciples apparently stayed in that locked room for a while, at least for that week intervening between Jesus' first appearance to them and his second when Thomas was present. Jesus came to them that first time to breathe the Holy Spirit upon them, not just so they would receive the Holy Spirit, but so they would get up, get out, and go about preaching the good news. He wanted them to get going, but evidently they took their time because they were afraid and they stayed in that locked room. Jesus showed great patience and forbearance. I think that's one of the great hallmarks of Jesus' ministry on earth when he was alive and I pray for his ministry now among all of us today. 
We shelter now in place because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We stay inside, trying our best to resist the temptations of getting out and about again. And in fact, there are some people I've seen in the news yesterday and today who are quite impatient about this and are bristling at the need to stay inside and shelter away from the pandemic. Contrary to the disciples who were afraid to go outside, dragged their feet about it, and did everything they could to delay, I think many of us would like nothing better than to have all this over with and get out again. Being patient is very, very hard. But we are a people of patience. In our reading this morning from the first letter of Peter, the author talks about how we are assured of our salvation. Even though we may not have seen Jesus ourselves and experienced him personally in our lives in a physical way, we nevertheless, as Jesus believers, believe in the promise. And we believe that no matter how long it takes, and how long it takes is, as Jesus said elsewhere in the Gospels, known only to God the Father, no matter how long it takes, salvation is coming. And we have a lot of practice as Christian people of being steadfast in that hope, being patient in that hope, and never giving up. My prayer for us in this particular time, when we are hoping for our leaders to make the right decisions, and praying for our ability to follow and stay with those decisions, so that the pandemic will end, and we can begin to renew our lives, I pray for all of us that we can have patience, encourage each other to have patience, and pray for Jesus to somehow give us each personally an experience of that so that we can hold on. And so I would like to offer a prayer in closing my reflection from the prayer book, a prayer for quiet confidence, something we need in this time and must hold on to. O oh God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, into your presence, and be present with us, so that we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The general thanksgiving is found on page 101 in the prayer book, and I invite you to say it together with me. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by your, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer attributed to St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, 
granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. about that on the Facebook page? Great, okay, thank you, because it's a little hard to jot that down on the spur of the moment. So you can go online and try to find the, the uh, morning prayer service in that prayer book and join in with us. I also will be changing the prayer that is on the church's phone line later today uh, to the following, and you can dial into the church's phone line anytime if you would like to hear this prayer if you need to. Savior, lead us to the place in our souls where there is tranquility, peace, and calmness. Where the waters are so still, we can walk on them with you holding our hands and leading the way. Allow our gentle spirits of love, kindness, and gentleness to spread across the land. Let it spread like the spring across the nation. Amen. 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 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.